Assassin's Creed Syndicate, formerly known as Assassin's Creed Victory, is the next entry in the annualized series of Assassin's Creed games by Ubisoft, due out October 23rd on PS4, Xbox One and PC. Set in the Industrial Revolution of Victorian England, a time of great writers like Robert Louis Stevenson, Charles Dickens and Arthur Conan Doyle. A time where great minds sport their theories such as the evolution of man by Charles Darwin and of course a time of prosperity and blood as the rich sat above their ivory towers and the poor were slaughtered by a killer known only to them as Jack the Ripper. Which brings us to the game where Jack the Ripper will probably be a Templar. So what's going to happen in it? And what does the debut trailer show us? Well first off Big Ben is a synchronization point. This can be seen in greater detail at 1 minute 3 seconds with one of the main protagonists perched on the edge. The real Big Ben was finished in 1859 with the bell made out of copper, tin, the interior coated in sand and the rope made out of horsehair. Next we have St Paul's Cathedral, also seen from an interior shot at the 23 second mark. It's also another synchronisation point, as you can tell by a different shot shown at the beginning of the gameplay trailer. The real St Paul's Cathedral was completed on Christmas Day 1711 and cost a whopping 143 million in modern day currency. This street shot however can be seen from an in-game perspective in the gameplay trailer. Also the developer does state that London is one of seven boroughs. Think of this like how Assassin's Creed Unity works. I also believe like every other Assassin's Creed game there will be set locations that take place outside the main map. This will most likely include Newcastle, Birmingham, London, Scotland, York, Leeds, Cardiff and Blackpool to warrant a guess. Now at 20 seconds we see a new means of transportation for Assassin's Creed Syndicate as you can now ride the trains. This is probably some indication as to how big the map will be and will most likely work like Watch Dogs did as a quick way to escape your pursuers. And now we move on to 25 seconds into the trailer where we see the Seven Bells pub. You can see the exterior of this building in the gameplay trailer. This will probably be used by the cafe in Assassin's Creed Unity. The Seven Bells pub is a fictitious name given to this location for the real name of the pub is called the Ten Bells pub. At 26 seconds in the trailer we see something interesting, Queen Victoria. Why I see interesting is because in real life Queen Victoria had 8 assassination attempts on her, so there's a good chance that there's going to be a mission where you're either going to need to try to kill or protect the Queen. My money's on the former. At 29 seconds we see yet another interesting shot that brings more to the eye. In real life, children from poor families started work at 5 years old. Now as far as the game goes, I can see the children being used as a new distraction method like the beggars from Assassin's Creed 2. At 31 seconds you can see the coal works. This is most notably a nod to the real world counterpart called Beckton Gas Works. From 35 seconds to 41 seconds you can see our male protagonist with a group of his comrades. This is a callback to Brotherhood as you can now have a group of people help you during missions. Going back to 40 seconds we see the gang that features quite prominently throughout this trailer. The gang these red coat gentlemen are based off are called the Peaky Blinders. They were a real street gang that terrorised London in the Victorian era. Now on to 48 seconds. This is a subtle nod to the murder on the North London Railway as seen by the blood on the tracks that you can see at a fleeting glance if you go frame by frame. The murder on the North London Railway happened on a Saturday 16th of July 1864, the time in which this trailer takes place. The victim was a Mr. Thomas Biggs. At 59 seconds, you see a new addition to the series, the Rope Launcher. This is a new device to Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and most likely replacing the rope you cut to reach the top of high buildings in Assassin's Creed 3 and Assassin's Creed Unity. We see this in action in the released gameplay footage. At 1 minute 6 seconds in the trailer we see an underground fight club. This will be a new activity you can partake in. At 1 minute 16 seconds we can see you can now ride horse and carriages in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. 
carriages can also be used as a stealth getaway option, like the cars and watchdogs for a better comparison. Also at 1 minute 16 seconds, we see a building that to me looks the double of the Royal Exchange Square in Glasgow. If you look at the bottom, you can see the statue of the Duke of Wellington. At 1 minute 22 seconds, we see the new fighting style that's been incorporated into Assassin's Creed Syndicate. By what the developer said, it seems that like the new combat style will be more free-flowing and more visceral. Now at 1 minute 25 seconds, we see another new device at your disposal, and that's the ability to zipline. This is probably in response to the annoying free-running system which was implemented into Assassin's Creed Unity. At the end of the trailer we see at 1 minute 45 seconds the pre-order content which allows you to do a mission for Charles Dickens and Charles Darwin. But to be honest, Charles Dickens will probably be in the game anyway as some sort of guide, sort of like Benjamin Franklin from Assassin's Creed 3. It may be interesting though to see what happens with these two intriguing figures and how far Assassin's Creed will go with them because in real life Charles Darwin died of dysentery and Charles Dickens had an affair with a Newcastle girl which inspired him to write great expectations. So it will be fun to see how far they are willing to push this. And finally we know there are now two protagonists, one male and one female, probably because of the backlash Ubisoft got with Assassin's Creed Unity. Unfortunately it is still one sided, with 75% of the missions being for the male protagonist and then switching over to the female character and most probably a way synonymous to how The Witcher 3 does it with Siri. So don't expect the freedom to switch on the fly like GTA 5. And lastly, there's no multiplayer this time round, making this the second game in the franchise not to have multiplayer component to boot. The other one was Assassin's Creed Unity, which only included co-op and that's all. On a non sequitur note, you can also notice that the debut trailer shows only the locations shown in the gameplay footage, so like the three masons, there's more mystery to uncover when we get our hands on the game. It's been a long video this time, so as always I hope you found this video informative and have a great day, my governors.